Hi, I'm Sophie and welcome to my world. You know, one of the best things about having my YouTube channel is that people will send me their ideas and they'll say, hey Sophie, you want to try this idea that I have and make it into a video? So Carolyn W. over at Danielle's Place has sent me this awesome little idea for how to make an animal castanet. Well, that's what she calls it. To me, it sounds a little bit like a hand clacker. So this is it. It's a little alligator. And you tell me, you think it sounds like a hand clacker? You know those little plastic things that have the hands and they clack? For me, it sounds like a hand clacker. But Carolyn W. sent me this great idea and I'm gonna show you my take on it right now. For this project, you will need giant or jumbo craft sticks, uniposca markers, Sharpie markers, scissors, ruler, googly eyes, hot glue, duct tape, an X-Acto knife, and a cutting surface. So this is a giant popsicle stick. This is a jumbo. And Carolyn suggests that you use the jumbo, which ends up looking like this, which is awesome. But sadly, I only literally had five of these in my warehouse, so I'm stuck using these guys. They, they work just as well, but they're, they're not as awesome as these big ones. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna measure, and if you're using the big giant version, you're gonna do the big giant version, you would do two and a half inches, but I'm gonna be doing a smaller version, so I'm gonna actually only use two inches. Now, you should hop on over to Carolyn's website because she's got a step-by-step -step tutorial that you can follow uh, you know, in pictures. So if you wanna, if, that, if that's easier, then you can certainly do that. So I'm gonna measure two inches on either side. And the great thing is I can cut one of these with just a pair of scissors. Now, if you don't have colored ones, that's totally fine. You can use um, just plain white ones and you can paint them. And that's why the UniPosca markers are so great for that. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my red, um, this is my red tongue depressor. That's gonna be my, that's actually gonna be my tongue. <laughs> It's actually going to be a tongue. So the first thing that I'm going to do with these guys, I'm going to put that off to the side so it's ready to go. First thing I'm going to do with these guys is I'm going to take some duct tape and I'm going to lay it down. And I'm actually going to measure my duct tape and cut it exactly to the width of my stick. And I don't need too much of this, so I'm going to just take one piece here and I'm going to cut it in half this way. Now Carolyn uses masking tape here, but I'm going to be using this duct tape just because I am a duct tape girl. So I'm putting that half on, half off, so there's sticky on the wood and then there's sticky hanging off. I'm going to do that with the other one. Sticky on the wood, sticky hanging off. Now I'm just going to line this up curved edge to curved edge, and just smooth that down, flip it over, and do the same thing again. Smooth that down. And see, you can see it already starting. You could leave it like a hand clacker right now if you wanted to. Now I'm gonna take another strip of my tape, and I'm just gonna measure from right behind the joint there to the end. Now, this is important. Your tape is a hinge, see, that it allows it to go up and over. What you don't want to do, this is, this is a very easy and common mistake, but what you don't want to do is take your tape and tape it over that because then it won't, won't flap anymore and then you won't get any noise. So you want to make sure that you're behind the hinge here. You want to make sure that you're right behind it. So you can, even, you can even pop it up like that just to make sure that you're not going on top of that because that, that's, that's going to be bad if you do that. However, because it's duct tape, you can always peel it off. Okay, so I laid this down, then I flip it over, and I seal it, and then I flip the other edge over and seal it. So now my alligator or dragon, whichever you prefer, has his nice scaly back, and now it's ready for decoration. 
Now, one thing I don't like is I don't like this edge being so, you know, squared off like that. So I'm going to take a tiny bit of my tape again, and I'm just going to use this as my measurement. This is the piece that was left over to make sure I get the right size. And I'm just going to make like a little triangle house point. And I'm going to put that on top so that it looks like kind of like a widow's peak or like the, the edge point that comes together on a dragon. So there we go. And now what I want to do is I want to give him teeth. So I just open this up like that. And this is where my uni Posca pens come in really handy. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can use white paint or, you know, you don't even have to give him teeth if you don't want to. But I just think it's kind of fun. So I'm going to make some triangle teeth right here at the top. I'm going to start at the top of his mouth, right at that rounded part. And then I'm just going to go all the way around the edges, making sharp little triangle teeth. Now, of course, you got to have that part where they swallow down. I think this is called the epiglottis is right in here. And then you go down the throat. So I made the little epiglottis there. Bloot, bloot. So that when he opens all the way up, and, and I'm going to give his little tongue a little texture, just like that line that goes down the middle of his tongue. Then you flip it over, and you're going to do the same thing on the back side. And we close him up, and he's almost done. All he needs are some eyes. So I'm going to use my glue gun, and I'm just going to put a drop of glue here and a drop of glue there. Drop on my little googly eyes. And I'm going to use my Sharpie pen here to give him some nostrils so he can breathe. It's very important for dragons to breathe and crocodiles too. And there you go. And you can see the difference between the big guy and the little guy. You got the mama and the baby. And there you have it. My take on Carolyn W.'s Animal Castanet. And I think they're awful cute. And if you go on over to Danielle's place, you'll see that she's got a whole bunch of different animals. She's got a cow. She's got a dog. She'll give you lots and lots of inspiration. So make sure you check out the link below for Danielle's place. And listen, if you've got an idea that you think that it would be a great video for me to make, well, send it on over. I'm always happy to take a look because it's your inspiration that leads to my creation. So check us out, sophie-world.com for more ideas. And if you like the video, make sure to give us a thumbs up. Mm -hmm.